should be going live in less than a minute. Hello, hello, and we are live. Welcome, welcome, everyone. My name is Shaylin Scott. I am the founder of Book Mecca. Um, if you do not know, bookmecca.org is an online Black bookstore and literary platform for all things Black lit, Black authors, and amplifying our voice and our stories. Today, we have Rian Amakar Scott. He is the author of of the world doesn't require you and insurrections if you have not gotten his book get it perfect time christmas time pick up the book if you don't order it from me get it from amazon get it from somewhere but go out and purchase his book um today we'll be talking a little bit about the story a little bit about his inspiration behind it give you a little bit more about him as the author and all things um that kind of make him who he is. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Rian. Hello, thank you for having me. So great to have you today. I'm glad to be so here. So we're gonna dive right in. I know your resume is huge. <laughs> You've done some amazing work. So I'm already going to just read your resume for all of you viewers who do not know. So I'm gonna read a little bit on here. Okay. It says, you're the author and story collection of The World Doesn't Require You. You have a debut story collection of Insurrections. It was awarded the 2017 Penn Bingham Prize for debut fiction, the 2017 Hillsdale Award for the Fellowship of Southern Writers. Your work has been published in journals such as The New Yorker, Best American Science Fiction, Fantasy 2020, Kenyon Review, Crab Orchard Review, uh, also the Hearst Wright Foundation, had you as a nominee this year. There has been so many accolades for your work and such positive feedback. How are you feeling about all of this? Um, it's, uh, you know, I didn't, you know, as a writer, you spend a lot of time being completely ignored um, and no one caring about what you do. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, when, when my first book won, uh, won that prize, it was, it was completely shocking to me. Um, everything that happened with my book was completely shocking to me, my first book, because I thought, you know, it's just going to get a little bit of attention and, you know, maybe a few positive reviews and then everyone will forget about it. And um, it, got, it got a lot of attention and they won an award and I was, you know, surprised. So everything after that has been, um, has been a surprise, been a pleasant surprise, I think. That is wonderful. So tell me about all the positive reviews that we've heard. I always hear about the negative reviews. Was there one that kind of just stuck in your head like, oh my God, this is too much? Yeah, well, my first book was on a, is, is on a, uh, a, a um, university press. So I had to go through a peer review. Uh, and, and there was <laughs> one peer reviewer who, who, who wasn't feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I still I still think about that a little bit, you know. Still stings a little bit, huh? It does. Uh, it it does. You know, it, it no, it it was it was sort of a feeling of oh, you know, this person you know didn't necessarily understand what I was what I was attempting to do, and um, but um, you know, the, they also had you know some some advice that I took to you know to to make the, the book better once it once I, once we started the editorial process. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. You took some of the positive from it, even though I know hearing something about your baby, your, the book's your baby. Exactly. <laughs> you know, how's your baby ugly? You, you just, it doesn't sit right in you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it for sure. And for those who are out there who are writers, um, what would you tell them about some of the negative feedback or even some of the positive things? What are some things that they should look for or expect? when they're going about trying to get their work out there? Well, I mean, you, you should expect a whole lot of rejection. Um, that's that's part of the process, you know, and it's and a lot, oftentimes it's not even saying anything about your work. Um, you know, it's like, 
you know, just the the person who read it didn't necessarily necessarily feel it. I think some of, some of my most uh, beloved stories have gotten a lot of rejection. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, a story in my first book called 202 Checkmates that a lot of people seem to really like. I think it was rejected maybe like 40, 50 times um, before it, before it was uh, accepted to a to a literary journal. Um, and even the whole book was, you know, it, my my first book, even the second book was was rejected a lot before it found its home. That is hard to believe because your work is just great. I guess it had to get through that first few layers of rejection, and then you just have to find one person who who who, who digs it. And you know, I, I think when my first book, I found just the perfect editor who 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 had the right amount of 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 love and admiration for it, and and the right amount of criticism to make it better. And um, you know, I'm I'm just grateful that it that it ended up with that person. Um, and you know the second book as well. You know, um, you know the the second book. The rejections were great. <laughs> but I, I go back and read the rejections sometimes. Um, you know when I'm feeling down because um, you know they, they were some of the best rejections I've ever seen in my life. You know, it's the you know people like I love this. And, you know, I'm just not. I'm not the right person to advocate for it. Or you know, I think the, you know I, I think this book is gonna is gonna make a lot of noise. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just not the one to to, to publish it. And that's fair, you know, and that, that, that's fair. You know, I only want you to, to, to be handling my work if you love it. I love that, love it. So there are um, a little bit of, I want everybody to understand what your book is about. Um, because when I tried to describe it to someone, especially today, I did not do a good job. Uh, <laughs> I probably made it sound like the most confusing book ever, but it is a beautiful mix. I. I would really like to, um, I think I read somewhere, someone said it's a mix of science fiction and genres and horror and drama and satire, all blended into one. Mm-hmm. And then you come out the other side and you want more. <laughs> that is truly, truly what it's like. Um, Thank you. For those Thank who are you. out there, what would you describe a summary of the book? How would you describe it? Um, I would just say that it's a it's, it's a collection of stories about uh um that that take place in a in a in a fictional town across across River Maryland, though, know, founded after a slave revolt. Um, you know that, that's kind of where where I start. You know, I think about these people as the children of this uh, of this insurrection, this great insurrection, and um, you know. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's it's difficult to to sort of uh, to sort of explain through through synopses. Um, you know, uh, I think uh, you know the people who 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 wrote the the back copy did a did a very good uh, very good job <laughs> of, of breaking yeah, it down. They did. Um, <laughs> but it 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 goes it goes in a lot of, a lot of different directions. Um, uh, you know, how do you explain what your mind is like? <laughs> you know, this is what my this is what's happening in my head. <laughs> so I, you know, um, yeah. so it's it's kind of like don't you know? It's it, it's a mix of uh, yeah, so it's a mix of genres. It's, it's a mix of jokes. There are a lot, a lot of, a lot of jokes. So it's, a, it's a, so it's a mix of a lot of things. That's a good explanation. The the thoughts coming from your head. I know when <laughs> I was reading some of it, I was thinking like, where did this come from? I mean, the imagination behind <laughs> it. Were you always an imaginative, creative, curious kid? Yeah, well, that's what my mother always used to say. She said, Boy, you have this wild imagination. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I was I was uh, the the youngest in my family. You know, my 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 uh, my brother uh, my brothers are five and seven years older than me. Um, so you know, you can imagine a lot of times they didn't necessarily you know want to want to hang out with me, and and they did too. Mm-hmm. We, we hung out, and we we played, and we played. But you know, there was a lot of times I, I had to fill in those gaps because it was you know it's just just me. So I you know I. I made up a lot of things and I feel like this is sort of an extension of 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 that an extension of play one, one of my favorite things as a kid was playing with toys you know I took that very 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 seriously ridiculously yeah. seriously and um and this this is you know there's a direct line from you know making up stories with my GI Joes to to this well you definitely took your imagination and you created a whole new world the town of cross rivers i mean it is so detailed and so specific. You can envision different parts of the town. You can envision the characters very clearly. Was that taken from a literal place or how did you get to that? And I think that every single place that I've been 
um, mixes into Cross River, but there's a lot that is, um, there's a lot that's more, that that's, it, it's getting more and more imagined, I think. Um, the more I, the more I sit with it, the more real it feels to me. <laughs> and I thought, you know, when my first book came out, I thought I knew, and uh, you know, I, I had been in it for about a decade. Um, but now I've, you know, um, I've been in it, you know, in longer, and it's, it, it feels lived in. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I, I, I know that in, you know, in another ten years, it's gonna feel more lived in. Um, you know, I know different parts of the town. I know, um, you know, different different people. Um, I, you know, I can see, you know, I, I think there's, there's something that happens, you know, that, that, you know, I'm communing with it every day. There's something that happens that, that, that makes it, you know, a certain groove in my mind that I can, I, I can go back to and I know yeah. what, for, for, you know, I know what, what, what Angela Street looks like or, or different parts of the river or the bridge. Well, you're definitely taking us on a journey and it almost feels as if with each book, you are going down a different pathway and you're learning a little bit more about this side of the yeah, town, uh -huh. this area, these characters. And I don't know if that's just in my head, but I feel as if some of these people are real familiar to me. Some of them <laughs> seem. <laughs> black, black folks say that, black folks say that to me all the time. You know, um, these are people that they know. Um, and and, and that's, yes. that's incredibly gratifying to me, um, you know. Um, I, you know, I, you know, sometimes you start with, with, you know, people, you know, with yourself or with people, you know, but a character doesn't become real until it separates from that, from that source material. Um, you know, sometimes characters come out and come from whole cloth, you know, um, but, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. until they separate from that source material, the character is not real, you know, that's why, you know, I, I think it's a, it's difficult to write a, a character out of revenge because you have to have some sort of love and, um, and, and, and care for the character. So if you're, you're angry with somebody and, and you just feel like you're going to write a parody of that, uh, of that person, a mean parody of that person, you know, that character is not going to come to life. You know, you have to separate and you have to find what is admirable and lovable about that character if you're going to spend any time with it with that character i love that authors that was gems y'all write that down <laughs> don't write out of revenge <laughs> find the love in this person i've tried yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you know what i actually do love this person you know <laughs> changes uh, right to bad stuff <laughs> Well, I know um, recently I've read a little bit about you too, and NPR called Cross River one of the most fascinating cities in America and this amplified version of reality, which honestly, in my opinion, I felt it was really true the way that they kind of brought that to life. Do you recommend reading Insurrections before the world doesn't require you or read it backwards like I did? <laughs> um... <laughs> I I don't you know I don't think I necessarily have a uh, a preference in how in, in how people uh, in, engage with it or, or read it. I think they're very different books. Um, you know, I, one of my one of my colleagues, a poet, Michael Collier, said that in, Insurrections was like uh, the bones, and uh, and and mm -hmm. um, the world doesn't require you as the spirit. You know, uh, and I and I and I love that. I thought that was a uh, you know he, he's a poet, so you know of course a poet's gonna say something like that. But uh, <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I thought that I thought that was beautiful. I thought, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I, I think the world. I, I, you know, I have my preference about which book I love. I, I, you know, um, it is you know, I, I think the world doesn't require you. Um, it, it, it's more closer to 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 my vision. The uh, insurrections. Mm -hmm. I love insurrections. You know, but it was. Uh, you know, I think a lot of it was um, me getting to know. The mechanics of of writing a lot of those stories were you know stories that they, they started off as me trying to figure out it started off as as, uh, as exercises um because i didn't know how to do a certain thing a certain thing in writing so i was like let me try it um and then mm -hmm. it, it blossomed into into a story um and um you know i was sort of getting to know the concept and getting to know the town um the world doesn't require you it's, you know i approached it you know with someone who knows cross river and, and knows how to write a story you know um, you know, I don't think any of those stories, um, I guess some of those stories came, a lot of stories came out at the same time, but they weren't, you know, I, I couldn't get them done at that time because I just didn't have the, the ability. I didn't have the skills. So, you know, it just took some time. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned your friend having, uh, being a poet and having those flowery words. You had some words in there myself that I caught. I don't know about you. I'm a Scrabble player. Do you play Scrabble? 
I do. I'm not very good, but I don't. I don't think writers are are, are the are the, are, are, are the best at Scrabble because a lot of times we're we're putting down the interesting words, and and the interesting words might not necessarily have have a high point value. <laughs> Well, you put the you put some words down, and all I could think of was "ooh, triple word score," and it was two of. <laughs> there was Afghans and mustachioed. I said, "Ooh." Well, good luck finding those words. The, good luck finding the letters from mustachio. <laughs> I, I know, I know. That is like all the letters in the Scrabble hand right there. But I was sitting there like, "Oh, that's a great word. I love that." Finding good words is is. That's like my golden ticket right there. Well, something else that, that, that kind of popped up too, and, and some of the themes that you have throughout the book is a little bit on uh, religion and masculinity, race, justice, loneliness, fear, higher education. I mean, it. this is just a few that I'm mentioning that you kind of touch on. Was there an overall theme that you tried to focus on or that you wanted the reader to get from your book? Um, I think, I, I, I think, you know, I, I sort of go towards what I'm, what I'm obsessing about, um, and what, what, what matters to me, what I'm thinking about a lot. So, um, overall, I'm not sure. Um, I think that, I, I think that, um, these stories feel right together. Um, and I think, um, overall, um, these characters, these characters feel, feel right together. Um, but um, what 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 I want people to get out of the book is whatever they're they're feeling. You know, I don't want to I don't want to sort of I don't want to dictate too much what what readers are, are getting out of the book. I think, you know, the way I write is is that we're co-creating it together. You know, I, I think I you know I'm given enough enough detail that the readers are building it in their head. Um, so necessarily, they're coming out. Everyone's coming out with their own different points of view um, on the. Uh, on on what's happening you know it's beautiful because i know honestly i am not someone that reads short stories I, I am not usually if it's like a long story i get so in love with the characters i want to hold on to them but when i picked up your book and i'll be honest i picked up the book because i love the cover art i said oh, do y'all see that the Shout cover to art is Dr. what Fahama. Comes beautiful so when i picked up the art i said picked up the book i said you know what i'm gonna give it a shot and each story is so engaging that you learn so much about each character and the brief amount of pages for each story is enough to have you coming back for more is enough to have you wanting to read more and you don't feel as if you don't know enough about the character and how do you get so much depth in Two to three pages or four to five pages. Um, I started writing when my when my oldest son was born. I was I was super concerned that I wasn't gonna have an, enough time to write, um, and um, you know, um, which wasn't the case. But um, my stories used to be long and unwieldy, and they and um, and they were and one of the criticisms I used to get was the, you know this they they were they were repetitive. And I could never understand what they meant because um, I did I wasn't able to look at my stories and see repetition, you know, too much repetition. Um, but then I started writing flash fiction narratives that were you know shorter than a thousand words. Um, and I would take my day and I whatever I was going through, whatever I was feeling, and I would take it and I would write a a, a narrative about it in my little journal. Um, and and that really showed me how to how to get in and out of a scene, how to how to how to build up a, a character very quickly um you know um you know, knowing you know in, you know character have to know what they want and uh, uh and and um well you have to know what the character wants and you know knowing what the character mm -hmm. wants very quickly um i think it's about sitting with the characters and getting to know the characters um or when 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 you write them and um you know like a, there's a story like a rare and powerful employee um that story was very sh is very short i i i, I initially wanted to write a novella but I knew I just couldn't stay with that character for 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 enough time because you know he was you know back to what I was saying earlier um you know he was he was uh he was reprehensible you know he was a reprehensible character so it's kind of like that friend or family member is like you know I love you but I can't spend any more time with you um and um, right right so so you so I think it's about knowing 
um, how much how much space each character um, needs and how much space you, you're willing to give um, each character. Now that's a, a good tool or a good task to have potential um, authors trying to use is a thousand words or less, seeing how much depth they can add it. That, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna try that myself. I definitely will. I'm gonna have to test that out. Now you were recently on um, Politics and Prose and you did a reading. And it was you and a few other of the authors who were nominated for the Hearst Realston Legacy Awards. Mm -hmm. um, and in that moment, you said, in Black fiction, we create a place where Black characters are hiding from white supremacy. That hit me like a ton of bricks. Why do you think it's so necessary to showcase that in your work or for the characters to have a safe place? Yeah, when I when I um when I came up with the idea of Cross River, I I thought I was gonna write about the DC area, and I and I you know after I read Edward P. Jones, I was I was kind of like, I know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave DC to him, and I'm gonna create my own world. Um, <laughs> you know, and I didn't I couldn't write about DC the way he did, uh, and I started thinking back to you know it, it came out of it came out of you know what I what I felt, um, you know um back to my obsessions and you know you know one of the things that's always it's always just a great sadness to me is that I can't look on a map and say this is where my ancestors were from you know this was you know it was stolen stolen from me um and stolen stolen from from a lot of us you know uh you know um we're, we're both Scots not not related but uh you know I yeah. I, I, I guarantee you <laughs> I know, like, know y'all were wondering like <laughs> un unrelated I'm Scots sure uh, put in the message <laughs> <laughs> but um you know that, that, you know paraphrase Malcolm X and those Scots in Africa um so um <laughs> yeah so you know I had to um you know so, so I started thinking about um you know creating my own homeland my own space um and that's what that, that's what Cross River um became to me um and so it's um um you know, and I started thinking about, you know, I, I came up with this history of the, of the insurrection and I was thinking of, you know, there's no, you know, we didn't have a successful insurrection in, in, in this country. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, throughout in the diaspora, we did, you know, we there's Haiti. Um, so, I, you know, I've always, I've always looked to that as, a, you know, with, with pride and hope and, you know, Black people have always looked to Haiti with pride and hope. And, um, and so, yeah. and, and so I, you know, I, I, I thought about, you um, you know, in real life, you know, the, the, the Haitian revolution inspired a lot of insurrections um, in this country. Um, and, you know, and so um, I, you know, I was like, what if one of those insurrections was, was successful? Um, and it just became, you know, an idea that, um, you know, I could, I could, you know, I, I don't have that, you know, I don't have that, 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 uh, that space. We didn't have that history, but in fiction, I could make that. And you know, and I think a lot of fiction, yeah, a lot of you know, and a lot of a lot of fiction, you know, we go through these, we go through darkness, we go through difficulty, but a lot of it is about creating a hopeful, a hopeful vision. Mm -hmm. And kind of speaking of the darkness, you mentioned a little bit of, um, well, more than just a little bit, you talk about emptiness and loneliness and fear and that um, that desire of belonging and wanting in some of your stories. Um, there was one in Slim and Hale and some of the characters there battle a lot of internal struggles throughout each of the short stories that mm. even just outside of the city and town that they are in, they are battling with things within themselves. Is this kind of reflective of the, the area or the time period that you were writing or was this reflective of something personal? Uh, I, I think it's reflective of something human. Um, I, I, don't, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I felt, you know, that, that sort of loneliness, so uh, not necessarily the darkness of slim, um, but I think that that is all, that's a part of us. Um, and, um, and, you know, we, we all have these, these burdens, um, and, you know, it's about how we are, how we're managing, how we're managing our burdens and, and are we, um, you know, are we putting the burdens on, on, onto those, uh, we love unfairly, are we unfairly burdening the ones we love, the people we love with the, with our loneliness and our fear, um, and, um, and, you know, I think someone like, someone like Slim, um, is, is feeling pain, he wants the whole world to feel that pain, 
you know he feels that it's it's his duty to make the whole the whole world feel what w- feel that that uh that that what he calls the living emptiness inside of him um without realizing that everyone has has a living emptiness and everyone is dealing with that burden mm-hmm. there, there's a part in that uh short story you mentioned that emptiness inside of him was his permanent affliction a monster who fed and fed and fed and that is I'm sure, especially now, the feeling of um, isolation and feeling alone, especially during the pandemic, a lot of our readers can definitely relate to that. You feel as if it is constantly eating at you. But a lot of the characters that you have throughout too have moments of revelation. They have, um, even if if it's false revelation, they still have moments of revelation um, throughout it. Was there any time throughout the book you were writing where you felt as if this character has gone too far, or this is not the right time for this particular story. I think there's certain things that um, there's certain things uh, that, that you that, that you put in the story that you need space to to deal with the consequences of. Um, I and you know, I think um, in um, Mercury and retrograde, um, I and I, I wrote you know initially was. Um, you know, there was a there's a character there, and um, and I was thinking about how um, a character named Fiona, she's a cyborg, and and um, the guy who who built her um, wants to have a relationship with her, and um, you know, in a, in a in my initial plan was that you know that that there was you know he was going to go too far, um, but you know that type of violation um, needs space and and time to deal with the consequences of you can't just put it in as a as a um, as a plot device, you know, uh, you know, if, if you're really thinking about these characters as um, as people, as, you know, things that happen to us aren't necess- aren't just plot devices. You know, you really got to give give it space to to breathe. And um, and so it wasn't a, so um, you know, I, you know, I, I, so I had to write write it in such a way, um, uh, you know, that you know, I knew this was going to be a short story, so it's kind of like. What can I handle with it? What, what can I handle responsibly within the space of a short story? And I think a lot of a lot of the things mm-hmm. in my stories, um, you know, I, I, the this, this story rolling in my six fold took a long time to write and to get and, and to get to get you know to get right because I'm dealing with a whole lot of things that are harmful, um, yeah. and um, you know those stereotypes have been you know, the, the the stereotypes that I'm that I'm that I'm playing with have been um, the basis for a lot of deaths. Um, a lot of wasted lives, you know, and it took a long time to get ready to, to, to get that story ready because I wanted to make sure that it was, um, wanted to make sure that it was, um, that I was handling that responsibly, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it took me about 10 years to write. Um, wow. Just, you know, so, um, so it, it wasn't necessarily that it wasn't the time. I think it's always the time for reverence, but, um, you know, I wanted to be irreverent responsibly. Uh, and I, I never want, I never want to, um, you know, I, I never want, you know, uh, black people to pick up the book, to pick up the books I write and say, you know, this, this uh, I'm embarrassed by this, or, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed that this person exists, um, that would, that would write this. Yeah, yeah. So when you wrote the book, what did your family think about it? Did they read it? Or did they yeah. just say, oh, my baby wrote a book? Yeah, they, 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 they read it and then yeah, and, and they, you know, they, they loved it and they were, you know, they reacted like a lot of people, you know, <laughs> our brother, you know, our brother was kind of like, and I had to put the book down at some point uh, to, to think through, <laughs> to think through. you know, and, and I, you know, I, 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 lo- I love that they read my work because I put in stuff there that, that uh, you know, they're, they're jokes in there that only my brothers would get. Um, and I, and I love getting the text message from my brother like, ah. I can't believe you put that in there. <laughs> um, you know, um, so um, okay, yeah, um, you know, and uh, you know, um, you know, I got, I got I got jokes in there that only my friends from high school would get, and um, you know, I know they haven't read the book because I didn't get any text messages from them <laughs> saying I can't believe you, you know that's in there. <laughs> they go ahead, and now they know if they're watching, read the book. We know you didn't read it. <laughs> Well, that is good, good. Yeah. Well, one part of the book that you wrote about, um, it kind of threw me off. These creature birds. hmm I tell you, 
those right there, it was so vivid and so realistic, the description of the birds. It had me looking at all the birds in my neighborhood a little sideways, <laughs> especially, especially here in Texas, the ones that kind of like cover the sky. I was thinking, oh my goodness, that's the birds. That's the birds. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, I don't know. I love birds. You know, I always wanted to write my own kaiju story. You know, um, you know, I, I love Godzilla, and um, so I so I wanted wanted to create that. And um, I mean, I, I love birds. In, in the summer, my son and I go out bird watching in the morning. Um, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I think a long time ago I read somewhere humans, you know, you know, we we can um, we can spread across the globe because we don't have a natural predator like a lot of like a lot of other animals. Um, so, was, you know, so I was, I was like, what if we, what if humans did have a natural predator? <laughs> um, then I read somewhere recently that, that, that mosqu mosquitoes are kind of like our, our natural predator. Um, yeah, they ate me up and, every you know, summer. And yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and where, where malaria is not uh, eradicated, you know, people, people die. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so you know, I was thinking, well, you know, what if we, what if we had, you know, an an actual, um, you know, natural predator that would, you know, and uh, and so the, those are the screecher birds. And if you're just tuning in, you have to read the book. This is Rihanna Makar Scott. The world doesn't require you. Pick up the book. Definitely read it. A collection of short stories from. It'll take you on a roller coaster. That's all I'm gonna say but you will enjoy every bit of the ride. Um, if there's a part in the book that you talk about, The Electric Joy of Service, that short story. I read that one twice, because I was thinking like, I don't know. I, it had me feeling some type of way, that story in particular. Uh, and it had me also thinking too, of this, this false quote, everybody has heard this quote about, um, that was supposedly from Harriet Tubman. I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they only knew there were slaves. Mm -hmm. And that false reality that we have had for so long that became generational, passed down, or even the kids are repeating quotes that are not true. Mm -hmm. Had me thinking about this story. And what was it about this story that made you want to, to put it in? It, it's just brief. But it's powerful. Mm -hmm. What led to this? Uh, yeah, uh, it started. It started very simply that I just wanted to write a story with uh, with, with a robot protagonist. <laughs> That's it. That, that was it. Uh, Wait a minute. What? That's and, it. And so, I'm thinking uh, it's gonna be some grand revelation. Well, I mean, I guess it, you know, it, it turns into that. You know, I, I was uh, I, there was a, a an anthology called Gigantic Worlds, that was edited by uh, Lincoln Michelle and Najee Nieto, um, and I and you know, it was for for for, for flash fiction, um, for a, oh, that had a science fiction bent, and so I, I you know I sat down and I said, oh, it's my chance to write my robot story. So I wrote um, you know, I wrote a robot story. But now I started thinking about you know, a lot of times robot narratives are 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 are, are slave narratives, you know. Um, you know, and and uh, and yeah. about you know, and uh, you know, you look at Westworld, and um, even you know, even in uh, in, in Star Wars, you know, it's it's, it's uncommented upon that um, mm -hmm. you know, how poorly these these robots are, are 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 treated, and I always want you know, I always want to see three PO to to you know to wrap his hands around Han Solo's neck and, and you know <laughs> and, and say I am a I am a sentient living being treat me with respect, um um. And so, um, you know, I started thinking about that and, and I started thinking about self-hatred. Um, and, um, you know, <laughs> you know, um, you know, slavery is, uh, is, 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 is socially unacceptable now. Um, but, you know, I, I look around, like I look at the president and I'm like, you know, if, if slavery was socially acceptable, he would, he would, he would own slaves. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, I think, mm. you know, I think if, if slavery was socially acceptable, um, you know, um, you know, there there will be people out there who, uh, you know, who who, who we uh, uh, interact with uh, on on a daily basis who who would who would do that, and you know, uh, you know, those people who argue that oh well, such and such was a man of his time, um, you know, um, you can't judge him by today's standards. Well, and it's like how do you judge John Brown? Then? <laughs> um, yeah. So, 
Um, so yeah, um, so you know, so um, that's how that you know story started off with a very simple, um, you know, simple starting off point, you know, jumping off point. Uh, but then it, uh, you know, I just started thinking of all kinds of questions. Uh, who is this robot? Mm -hmm. Why, you know, what is this? What is this ro what what does this robot want? Um, how did he get to the how did he get to this point? Who created him? And all that um, you know, all that went into that story. Just the thoughts of, of creation and the robot and the, the servitude. Um, you touch a little bit on on religion too. And you even have characters and God and God's son. And I, I mean, very first, <laughs> the very first short story. I think I read that I was like, what? <laughs> The very first one. And what what type of feedback did you get from um, maybe some religious critics or <laughs> those who may not have been okay with some of the tone throughout the book? Did you get any of that at all? I didn't, no. No. I, I, yeah, um, I, I didn't. Um... And I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. You know, I think yeah, you, that story yeah, is 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 uh, is 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 pretty irreverent, and pretty um um, and pretty um, you know, it has some criticism towards uh towards towards religion. Um, but I think, I, I think it ultimately, um, it ultimately has a has a love for 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 the thing for a lot of the things that um for the a lot of the positive things that I think. Um, and I, I think religion has, has been responsible for a lot of for a lot of things. Has a lot to answer for, but um, but there's also um, a, the other side. Um, in the end, the religion uh, is is responsible for 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 the for the creation of of this of this music um, that that uh, that comes you know that, that sort of defines the, the town. Um, and I, and and that's and I think that, that that's real. You know, I think a, you know a lot of our our great artists come out of the church. Um, yeah. You know, a, a lot of a lot of music, uh, you know, you know, has spun off from 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 those gospel, um, you know, got from gospel. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, um, and I and I and I think that there is, um, you know, in, in art, there's a touch of the sacred to me, at least. Um, you know, art. You know, I I saw a quote that I that I, you know, I, I said something like, um, art and art and um and writing should feel sacred. Um, and yeah, and and, I, and and that's that, that's how I you know I you know that that's I think that's the connection that that I was making in, in David Sherman. I love that you're so authentic in, in the words that you choose. It seems it's very intentional um, when you're writing. What is your inspiration behind your writing? Do you feel as if you were? I never want to ask an author who do you think you like because you are just like yourself for sure, but. <laughs> Was there one that you tried to aspire to be, or you read their work and you just wished that you could have been writing like that? Well, I mean, I think like a lot of like a lot of black male writers, I'm, I'm always under the thrall of Invisible Man. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's on my wall. Yeah, um, and I, and I and I you know I, I from the from the moment I wrote it, I think that um, that uh, uh, that got down into my into my DNA and uh, um, and I and I thought myself when I wrote my first book I thought myself free of of that of that um that influence and I was happy and I was I was uh I was celebrating and then I taught a class on Invisible Man and I had to reread it and I was just like man look at all this that I stole and put into Insurrection <laughs> uh, so so borrowed I, borrowed <laughs> <laughs> and and so you know I, I you know I, I you know, I sort, of, I sort of leaned into that. If you if you look at um, um, the last story, um, you know there the, there are a lot of conscious conscious um, borrowings and conscious uh, allusions. Whereas in my first book, you know there was a little, there's a lot of unconscious borrowing from from mm -hmm. from, that, from that book. And you mentioned that you are a, a professor. Yes. Where do you teach? University of Maryland. What do you teach? I teach uh, English and creative writing. Yeah. So if you're teaching creative writing, does that mean there's going to be a whole slew of creative writers coming out afterwards? Oh, there are always creative writers coming out. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, you know, um, you know, my, my job is to uh, my, my job is uh, to to help them um, help them write like themselves. You know, um, help them you know figure figure out you know what they're obsessed about, what they're what they what they're saying. Mm -hmm. 
Are there any writers um, right now that have come out that are just like blowing your socks off? Um, I mean, a lot of, you know, Kiese Lehman, uh, um, Nafisa Thompson Spires. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a thing um, later tonight um, with, uh, with Nana Kwame Adeji Brenya. I'm doing a, doing a reading. Um, yeah. Um, a, a, a versus style reading. So we're gonna. I saw that you are battling verses for real. Yeah, like like uh, like we, like Gucci Mane and 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 Jeezy. I don't know who's who. Yeah. yeah. That's like, did you ever think we would get to the point of us having virtual concerts, virtual interviews? I mean, everything on the Zoom, like. Well, I mean, I, I was just thinking the other day when the whole world first collapsed, you know, I had I had so many readings lined up and, you know, and, you know, I think maybe like 10 readings lined up and it was just, they we just went out the window. Um, and then I think uh, all of a sudden we started figuring out, you know, let's do Zoom readings. Um, and there are more literary events now than... <laughs> than ever. It's like, I, 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 can't go, I can't go to your literary event, you know? Spring night, there are like 10 literary events. Right now, um, Kiesa Lehman is talking, is, is talking to Crystal, Crystal Wilkinson. And I, and, and I was like, oh, but I'm, but I'm talking to Shaylin. Man, so I, I know. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Oh no, I think we froze up. Yeah, I can do a reading with people. Oh, we're losing you. Y'all hold on. Hold on. He's coming back. Don't you worry. In the meantime, well, we get the Wi-Fi moving right. I tell you, there's one thing about technology. You can never trust it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But as I mentioned, the world doesn't require you. It's the book. You can pick it up anywhere. Your local bookstore, please support independent bookstores. Please do so, especially now during the holidays. Best time to do so. Let's see if we can get beyond that. Are you back? You're still frozen. A little bit. That's all right. One thing about uh, independent bookstores, I definitely will tell all of you viewers right now, Christmas time, holiday time, purchase your bookstores. You can buy a book anywhere. Um, and I'm sure all of you know Amazon. But try and support your independent bookstores. Um, we try to support the authors as well. And we want to see them flourish. Um, Part of the reason Book Mecca exists is to showcase and amplify the voices of authors like Mr. Scott. So we want to make sure that their voices are heard and they are not lost in the noise that's going on. I think you're back. Are you back? I'm back, yes. Yay. All right. I feel the space with just nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> that's always as good. Leave it up to me. I'm going to find something to talk about. Um, there was one story I wanted to ask you about. In numbers, this story, uh, the characters are interacting with these water women, these mm-hmm. mermaid sirens type women. It had me thinking about uh, how these relationships start, how you get so lost in a person and you have these, almost like you, you lose yourself. Was that a, um, <laughs> I, I wanna say that that seemed really personal that one, that story in particular was, I keep asking it back, is it personal? But it's probably not, it's probably just reality, right? Every story is personal. <laughs> every, every story, every story is, um, every story is, uh, is, is emotional autobiography. <laughs> um, so, um, but um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, again, just, just like, just like what I was saying with characters, you know the stories have to diverge from, uh, for, you know, if it's fiction, they have to diverge from from their from their source material. Um, so it's, um, you know, it, you know, if like like if I break a glass and I and I shape it into a bird, you know, it's not a glass anymore. You know, um, it's you know, it's it's a it's a, it's a piece of art. Yeah. Um, 
and and you can't call that a glass anymore. You know, it's, it, you you know, it's it's a relation. So the relationship between the relationship between the source material that I'm using and the um and 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 what comes out in the book is the relationship between you know between that um you know and you know between that broken glass and the art object. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of speaking about art too is we talked about the cover work and the artist behind it. What was the inspiration behind the picture that was chosen? Was there a story behind it? Um, my, um, my, uh, my, my publishers went out and, and, uh, and brought me several, several, um, several pictures to choose from. And, um, they were all, um, they were all great. Um, they were all interesting. Um, and, um, and, uh, but this one just is, stood far and above, um, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, the, the, author, the artist does a lot of self portraits. Um, and so, um, you know, again, this is, this is him. Um, this is, uh, but, um, you know, it feels, feels like, you know, the, the character, you got this guy pushing yeah. again, against the space, you know, um, trying to find, trying to, trying to break out and uh, trying to break out of, of the boundaries and the, and the borders that, that he's, uh, that he's in. It feels, you know, feels like a lot of, feels like a lot of my characters. It, it definitely feels like your book as well. You are breaking boundaries with your book. Uh-huh, yeah. It's not necessarily a, what is this classified as? <laughs> I would just say fiction. <laughs> yes. I would just say fiction. I know I went in the um, the library because I just, sometimes I go in the library just to see where our books are, where they're located, if we have a special section or, mm -hmm. or what. And I looked and looked and it was under science fiction. Really? <laughs> yes. It was under science fiction. And I said, okay, you were right there with Octavia Butler. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I can't be mad at that. Exactly. But you know, I mean, like um, uh, the, 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 the two robot stories. Uh, oh, we lost you again. I tell you, today they just want, don't want to let us be great. That's okay. We get it. Great company right there on the shelf. <laughs> I tell you, if it's not today, I think everybody is online watching the verses, ready for the verses. And I don't. I don't know if, uh, if any of the other stories are science fiction, but you know, some of the stories are. are oh, we lost you again. Have you? Yeah, we lost you again. That's okay. I do want all our readers to, and all our viewers here to know that even though technology has not been our friend today, we love you. We love your work. <laughs> And we will definitely continue to support you for sure. And as our time runs down, I want to make sure that if you want to leave anything with any of the viewers here, um, oh great, you can hear me fine. How am I? My no. Yeah, still not coming through clear, but that's okay. I tell you, this is a sign. This is a sign that you'll have to come back to the third. Am book. I back yet? <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> that's okay so when you write your third I'm back. book and you come back then you can tell us all about the book here so what we're going to do is as we're wrapping up we're coming up on our time and I know you have another event to head to which it'll be on your page and I'll make sure to share too I can hear you okay now I can kind of hear you Now I hear you. Can you hear me now? I'm back. Yes, you're back. Great, great. I was just saying, um, I know technology has not been our friend today, so that's a sign that when you write your third book, you'll have to come back and <laughs> tell us all about it and give us the little first preview. We would love that. Love it for book back. back. 
I'll be back. <laughs> Love that. And I know you have your verses coming up tonight. So we'll make sure that you share and I'll let all of our viewers know where you'll be tonight so they can tune in too. There's so many virtual events going on. Continue to support your work. Continue to do your great writing. Um, you are a fabulous author. I love what you're doing. Do you want to leave our viewers with anything in particular? Yeah, I would just say uh, come 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 to my uh, come to the event with Nana Kwame Adeje. Um, it's it's called it's a story time with Julian. Um, you can find it on 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 YouTube and uh, and Facebook. Um, uh, it's called Wordplay. Um, and um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be great fun. Uh, and uh, yeah. All right, great, great. Well, I always like to leave out with a little quote, and I thought this was fitting. This is a Toni Morrison one says the ability of writers to imagine what is not the self, to familiarize the strange and mystify the familiar is the test of their power. And your work is definitely powerful enough for us to read, pick up and share with others. So I wanna thank you all for coming on our live today with Book Mecca and Rian Scott, thank you so much for taking the moment and the time to talk with us today, we really appreciate it. And so I will let you get to your verses. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You have a great one. You too. Bye, guys.